Hey everybody, I wanted to do a follow up on the issue I was having with my 3 inch lowering leafs that I bought off eBay a couple of years ago. Um, they are definitely not Bell Tech. They're not like what I would consider a mainstream name brand lowering leafs. They have caused me headaches from the time I put them on. What, what's happening is the leaf spring, I believe, was not designed to be used on a blazer. Now, I can't guarantee the differences in weight. I can't, you know, proclaim to know. But just by design, there's going to be a weight difference over the rear tires and behind the rear tires between an S10 pickup truck and an S10 blazer. I mean, that goes to reason. That doesn't take a lot of intu intuition. But the problem I'm having is, is the springs are so weak that they, A, lowered the vehicle three inches, which is fine. That's what I bought them for. But they won't stop the rear end from squatting. And I mean squatting bad because I could jump on the back bumper and bounce the frame off the top of the rear end housing. Just, you know, metal on metal contact. Clang, 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 clang. Even with the stupid uh, shocks on there, if you hit any kind of like undulation, pothole, anything in the road, it'll literally slam the rear end housing into the bottom of the frame and sound like you're breaking something. So, you know, that's definitely not going to be acceptable. So, I originally thought that because I lowered the vehicle and left the stock uh, shocks on there, I thought I'd blown out the inside valving of the shocks. Maybe that was contributing contributing to why it was uh, bouncing up and down and compression so easy was maybe those shocks were blown. But I took the factory shocks off and lo and behold, they still compress and rebound just like it should. I mean, they're not broken or anything. So it only lends more credibility to my theory or my hypothesis that these stupid leaf springs just aren't, uh, don't have the strong enough spring rate to properly support the back of this vehicle. Um, I think I've mentioned before, but it warrants mentioning again, a leaf spring vehicle is never supposed to squat. And I know right now there's few people with that purple poof coming out of their head going poof. I don't understand that, you're crazy, don't talk nonsense. But I challenge you to look at any online source, book, reference, chassis builder, chassis tuning guides, anything like that. Leaf springs are the complete opposite than a coil spring car. Let me repeat that. A leaf spring vehicle operates completely opposite of a coil spring vehicle. Okay. Rather than get too much off topic and get into the coil springs and the geometry and the squatting and all that. The leaf spring vehicles, when you have the proper, I'm gonna call it spring rate, in your leaf springs, your body of your vehicle will never get any closer to the rear tire than it does at sitting at ride height. Now, if you start piling like six or seven people in there and put a hundred, two couple of hundred pounds in the trunk, you could eventually squat that car and bring that body down. But I'm talking about a normal situation, normal amount of uh, weight in the passenger compartment. The body of the car should never go towards the tire, even at full throttle, wide open launch. Because what the leaf spring does is it stabilizes and, and maintains that height of the body and then as your suspension applies downward force to the tires to make them plant, the body will actually separate. The body will move upwards away from the tire on a leaf spring car. Watch any cars you see at the racetrack. If you go to the drag strip or get on YouTube, look at leaf spring cars when they launch. The body of the car never goes to the tire. Because if that was happening, it would throw your pinion angle off. I mean, it, it would actually be detrimental to the operation of your rear suspension, your U-joints, everything. So, <clears throat> with that uh, being clarified, my issue is I have to get this thing to quit hammering my frame into the top of my rear end housing. So, 
I went and bought a set of 1979 Malibu shocks. Now these new shocks are smaller and the body of the shock is smaller because I had to go smaller to fit inside this uh, coil spring that I'm adding to the shock. These factory S10 shocks, I don't know if they're even supposed to be on this vehicle or not because they've been on there ever since I traded for the vehicle several years ago. But the body, it's too fat to fit inside that blue spring. So basically I found, just through research and talking to friends of mine, that the G-body shocks mount the same way as the S10, but they're shorter and the body of it's small enough to fit inside of that coil spring. Now those coil springs, those are helper coil springs that I think you can look up online that's gonna be listed as like rear shock helper spring or something like that. Uh, the main company that produces them is called Superior. They, uh, I know they sell on eBay and I believe I found them on Amazon as well. What that is, is in this set that I have, because they do have ones that are stronger. This is what's called a 750 pound rear helper spring kit. So basically what it does is it clamps to the body of the shock and adds a 375 pound coil spring to each side of your vehicle to help support the weight. Well, I didn't have and could not find anywhere on the internet written instructions of how these things install on the shocks. So I just went with what seemed to be the most common sense way of mounting them. Um, hoping that this isn't turn into a headache because this Malibu shock is two and three quarters, I believe it's two, two and three quarters shorter than my factory shock, which helps with that three inch drop on the vehicle. I got both of the shocks through my local advanced auto parts for $43. So I can't beat that price. You know, these are Monroe, oh, Spectrums or something. It was like their premium replacement shock for a 1979 Malibu which gives me just darn near the three inch change in my shock length. I was able to add on my superior. I'm assuming they're superior because I got that kit in a trade without the bolts from a friend of mine probably four or five years ago. I actually forgot I had them and then I realized, wait a minute, I might have a leaf spring helper set to try to fix this stupid S10 blazer. So anyway, long story short, I uh, went and got the bolts, found a deal on the shocks, and uh, decided today was a nice enough day that Eli could help me, because it's going to be a pain in the neck to do those top upper bolts, because I only have one hand that can reach above my head, so holding that bolt to start and tighten those two nuts up top are going to be my biggest challenge. Um, another challenge I've had or noticed was I measured the... I measured the stock shock when it was still on the vehicle and it literally from where the bolts mount at the top to the bottom of the bolt at the bottom, the major big bolt, was 16 and a half inches. Well, I'm looking at the even these Malibu shocks, they're going to be pretty compressed. I mean, it's definitely going to be into the starting where the, the uh, I'm going to say these uh, coil springs, these helper coil springs, they are kind of a progressive design. They've got a little bit of give at the beginning of its, of its compression, and then they get a lot stronger as they go, as they compress further. I'm hoping it's not a huge nightmare to try to play with the rear end hanging distance to get these things on the vehicle in the first place. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that there's not so much spring pressure that it's actually raising the back of the vehicle where I lose the ride height that I've worked so hard to establish. So that's uh, gonna be uh, covered here in the next 10 or 15 minutes because I don't know for sure how that's gonna turn out. But I wanted to make a video talking about my game plan, explain my, my hypothesis on why this stupid thing is squatting like it's trying to take a poop 
and hitting my frame on the top of my rear end every time we hit even the smallest bump in the road so rather than you know break my vehicle or god forbid wreck the car because it's a pretty violent situation depending on how fast you're going when your car bottoms out like that in the back so anyway i appreciate you guys watching this video or all my videos um if you could uh, like subscribe share all that good stuff um, if you have any questions or comments please feel free to post them um, hopefully fingers crossed this will be a cheap cure for this absolute headache of a problem i'm having so appreciate you guys watching keep tuned in